So today I'm gonna to take common household items and make them radioactive. Now there's two ways to go about doing this. One is through contamination, the other is through activation. We're gonna use uh, contamination today. Activation is more of bombarding an object with neutrons, which then transmutes that object into other radioactive isotopes that exist within that element. Now this is a revigator. This is a radioactive water jug or water crock. And so the idea was, was to take this thing and to fill it up with water and then leave it overnight and let the powering effects of radiation uh, permeate that water and then people drink it the next day. And um, yeah, not the best thing in the world. I don't know if anyone actually uh, was injured by this because uh, a lot of the, the radioactivity that was imparted into this from radon and then all the daughters of radon uh, isn't that radioactive. And so uh, I think there's more people like getting exposed to heavier metals when they were drinking this. Uh, but today, this revigorator is going to be my reaction chamber. So I'm going to take uh, a couple of items and I'm going to stick them inside of here for about a day or two and to see how radioactive they become from the contamination of radon that's inside of here. Because on the inside of this jar, there is carnitite ore that's been crushed up and lined on the inside here. And so this makes the inside of this jar pretty radioactive. This is something I actually found at an antique shop in Washington State. Uh, you can pick these up on eBay. They're kind of expensive though. I found this one for, for about 40 bucks. So, yay me. So just to show you how radioactive this is, we're gonna switch on this Geiger counter right here. We'll just move it into this position right here. As you can hear, it's already clicking away because it's right next to this. But if I take off the top, it's significantly more radioactive. So I'm getting around 80,000 counts per minute. Now that's pretty high. Now that 80,000 counts per minute is limited just to this little surface area right here. So actually the radiation that this is producing inside of this container is much higher because this surface area is very small. And so that 80,000 counts per minute is just being detected by the surface area of this detector. So I would be curious, uh, maybe I should do a little math and actually figure out exactly uh, how much radiation is being generated inside of this container. Uh, but I would imagine it would be somewhere on the order of a couple million counts per minute of uh, detectable radiation based off of the surface area inside of this jug. So the two objects that we're gonna be irradiating today and making radioactive are gonna be this banana. Uh, I figure it'd be kind of interesting to see uh, how radioactive a consumable item can become. And I know you're probably thinking, well, are bananas already radioactive? Kind of true. Uh, they do have some potassium 40 in here, which is a radioactive isotope of potassium that's inside of this banana but it is so low, it's almost impossible to detect. So we're gonna throw that inside of here. So the other item I'm gonna use is this toy cup I got for my daughter. And I know like, oh, it's so horrible you were rating a child's toy and if she plays with it and all such stuff. It's like, I'm not really too concerned about it because uh, even when this becomes contaminated, I can just wash it off. I could just wash off all that contamination. It doesn't make the item actually radioactive. The contamination is all surface contamination. And that's kind of the difference between contamination and activation. But it also depends on the level of contamination because some things can be intermixed with contaminants, uh, making it very hard to separate out. But with this thing, I'm really not too worried about it because uh, it will just be the surface that's contaminated with the radon daughters. It'll be pretty easy to remove by just washing it. But it'll be interesting to see how radioactive this will become. So we're gonna stick both the banana and this little teacup inside of this for about uh, like probably two or three days and uh, see how radioactive it becomes. So let's look at these objects really quick to uh, see what the radioactivity is before I put them into here. So we get a baseline of how much contamination they're going to have dumped on top of them. Uh, it's always good to have a baseline to start off with with these type of experiments, just to see how much contamination uh, this will impart onto those objects.
All right, so these two items that I put in there yesterday have been here for about 24 hours. So they've had some uh, time to uh, cook inside the Revigator uh, just to become contaminated with the daughters of radon that are being created inside of here because of all the radium turning into radon and then turning into all these other um, secondary decay products that are uh, just turning into radioactive dust that's just falling onto these objects. And so uh, they should be radioactive. Let's open them up, check them out. Now they're not permanently radioactive. Uh, they're just contaminated. So uh, just washing them with soap and water will totally clean them up. And also the contamination that's on here, the daughters of radon are pretty short-lived until you get to about lead 210. Uh, that has a 22-year half-life, uh, but it shouldn't really even be detectable. It's in such a small amount. The only reason why the other stuff is detectable is because it is it has such a short half-life that uh, the shorter the half-life of a radioactive isotope, the more radioactive it is. And so it only takes a very small amount for it to be picked up by a Geiger counter. So let's open this up and check it out. First up, we have the teacup. So I'm gonna turn this on. Now this is gonna be a little radioactive right here because of this container. So I'm getting around 3,600 counts per minute. And we're gonna stick with counts because most of the stuff is uh, beta and alpha and some gamma radiation. So I figure I just wanna see the the total amount of counts. Let's pull out the first object. So here's the teacup here. And I'm getting around 12,000 counts, 11,000 counts. So this is uh, considerably more radioactive than when it went in because uh, this was just reading background radiation. The radioactive reading is kind of dependent on which side of the cup I am actually reading. So it looks like the contamination uh, was more uh, localized onto one section more than another. And then also on the bottom of it, it's not really contaminated at all. I mean, a little bit, but nothing compared to the sides. So that's the first object. Now we're going to pull out the banana. So here is the banana that was put in there. And see how radioactive this has become. Now this is a radioactive banana. You can hear it. And so this was the part of the banana that was facing up. So yeah, I'm getting about 12,000 counts, 11,000 counts per minute for both of these items on their hottest side. But like I said, all you'd have to do is remove the peel on this and it would be fine to eat. Uh, the contamination hasn't uh, penetrated the peel of this banana, so uh, there's no danger to anyone. And I'll just probably put this back in the fruit bowl. Uh, I might wash it beforehand. Uh, yeah, maybe, uh, but there's really no risk to anyone uh, for ingesting this because uh, no one I know actually eats bananas with the peel on of it, so. But now that both of these items are outside of the revigorator here, uh, they are uh, going to slowly start losing their radioactivity because of those uh, daughters of radon that are the contamination on these are going to start decaying away very quickly and very rapidly and then they will start turning into uh, lead 210 which is much more uh, has a much longer half-life than all of these other radioactive elements that uh, came after radon so it's much harder to detect in such small quantities because the radioactive dust that's on here is a very small quantity and uh, only because it is so radioactive that's the only reason I'm actually able to detect it. But uh, it's still pretty cool, you know, making stuff uh, temporarily radioactive. 
Well, I hope you learned something about contamination versus activation. Maybe in a future video, I'll actually uh, activate some metals and stuff like that so we can actually see that whole process and see what happens with that. Uh, this is a little uh, quicker and easier to detect, whereas with activation, depending on how strong of a neutron source you're using, uh, it can take a while with not like uh, huge results. Uh, but still, it's something that I haven't done before and I would like to do. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, leave a comment, consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.